die alone in night It's had to stay in my eyes But with you it's like I never felt that way Phones been ringing 20 times I don't seem to mind Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a new week at medical school. It is Monday. It is five past eight. You know, I actually woke up not that tired, but I woke up feeling very lazy. I was like, oh, I can't be bothered to get out of bed. It's starting to get a bit colder in the mornings. It's getting darker. The sun's not out. It's a struggle, but we're up. We're dressed. I mean, when I say we're dressed, we're literally the first bit of gym kit i saw because that is the benefit of scrubs ladies and gents um oh i already had a mask in here right we are off to guy's hospital today for a uro gyne so um urology and gynecology combined clinic so yeah i'll bring you along with me but if you are new here my name is tash i'm a medical student as i'm sure you could tell by the title of this video make sure you hit subscribe for lots more vlogs and lots more info about being a medical student in London. Okay, so voiceover Tash here. So it takes me about half an hour to get to the hospital and then once I'm there I pick up my green scrubs, get changed, make sure I've got my lanyard on, then head to the clinic which probably takes me around 10 minutes to actually find where in the massive hospital it is. This morning I was sitting in on a Euro gynae clinic. So basically this is for women who have symptoms that involve their urinary system, so their bladder, their urethras as well as their gynae system, so their uterus, their vagina, ovaries. So the three most common things that the urogyne clinic sees is prolapse, stress incontinence, and urge incontinence. So we were either assessing women with early diagnosis of prolapse and working out what the best sort of management plan was for them. At lunchtime, I left the clinic with loads of information. Honestly, if you're ever struggling with a concept or a topic, pick up some of the patient leaflets and now this afternoon I am scheduled to have a study afternoon even in fourth year not every day is going to be eight till six you're going to have times to catch up and review what you've seen on placement to do some personal questions or to do any other like life admin you need to do so the plan for this afternoon is edit a youtube video then I'm going to review some of the conditions I've seen over the last few weeks do some personal questions finish my reflections from last week so we have to reflect on every single day. I then also need to write up a long piece reflection. View the time lapse. Hi guys from me and my head turban. I had a productive afternoon to start and then just got a bit overwhelmed by something. I will probably sign out for now and I will catch up with you all tomorrow. Soon after it's over, I will be yours. Loose laughter softens up tension in my shoulder. Let's take. So this morning I was in the rapid access clinic for gynecology. This is where patients go who have been referred by their GP under the two week wait referral if they have worrying signs of gynecological cancers. Before we have a bit of a heavy conversation, I just wanted to show you the staff room and how nice it is. Obviously it was donated and you can even see the shard. <laughs> Say hello. Say hello to the camera. Say hello. Say hello, YouTube. I haven't really vlogged much this afternoon as I think it will become evident. Now, the first four or five patients were absolutely fine. Their symptoms were not suspicious of cancer, but unfortunately, the last patient, the doctor had to break the bad news that unfortunately she had endometrial cancer. But I just feel really, really crap for her. Not for me, obviously. Alex and me are going to have a spag bowl for dinner and then we're actually playing tennis at nine o'clock. Arty poodles. Arty poodles. Guys, my dog. Ah, where's your nose gone? <laughs> Don't put your nose in there. Ah. Good morning, 
wishing everybody a happy Wednesday. Wednesday means a day at home. I was about to say the day of rest, which is what my brain and my body thinks it is, but we've got a lot to do today. So basically, I, I'm sure you've seen this diary before, but basically it is a day by day planner, which I find so useful. I basically use it as my to-do list as well. Anyway, um, I've got a couple of meetings this afternoon. So in fourth year and fifth year, we have one um, educational supervisor who kind of looks after us for the whole of two, the two years, making sure we're on top of everything, looking at our portfolio. So I've got my first meeting with her today. And then I think I've told you guys before, but in fourth year we have to do something called a quality improvement project. So I've also got a meeting with a doctor for that this afternoon. So I'm gonna write my to-do list and yeah, let's get stuck in. It is lunchtime. I just went over some like differential diagnoses. So what I recommend you doing is thinking, so say for example, at the moment I'm on a gynecological, a gyne block. So I've taken like the 10 most common presenting complaints. So for example, it might be painful periods, dysmenorrhea, it might be heavy periods, menorrhagia, it might be postcoital bleeding, post um, sexual intercourse bleeding, um, it might be postmenopausal bleeding, um, it might be vaginal discharge. And then what you want to do is you want to find a list of causes for those presenting complaints. So then the, when you go and take a history from a patient, either on placement or in an OSCE, and they go, I've got bleeding after menopause, then you've got kind of a list in your head which you can kind of tailor your questions towards. So you're kind of going through that list and going, mm, not likely to be that from my questions and the answers. So yeah, it's just kind of good to have a list of differential diagnoses because nobody is ever gonna come to you and go, I've got vaginal atrophy, for example. You're gonna have to work that out. So it's best to start taking it from the presentation and then working down. So I've done that this morning and then this afternoon I'm gonna do a few questions, but first let's get some lunch. So while I ate my cheese and ham baguette, I know, or call me Gordon Ramsay, I watched some YouTube. I think today I was watching the queen of med YouTube herself, Faye Bait. Um, I think it's so important to actually stop for lunch as it can be so tempting just to push through when you're at home. Ollie and me then went to our favorite cafe to make the most of the sunshine before finally going to the park, which he was very grateful for. Alex and me then caught up on the first episode of The Great British Bake Off with our ice creams. Hello guys and welcome to a Thursday. So as always I had my coffee and I listened to an audiobook. Today I was in the general outpatients gynae clinic which was so cool. I'm actually in my own clinic running, well doing some of the appointments which is really exciting. This is my room. Spinny chair for like a doctor. <laughs> So most patients I saw were presenting with dysmenorrhea, which is painful periods, or menorrhagia, which is heavy periods. Here is my rather gross looking lunch, but let me know in the comments whether you put beans or cheese on your jacket potato first. <sighs> Guys, I'm absolutely knackered. Like, it's only half four. Like, I didn't leave late or anything. I mean, I probably left a bit early. Um, I think because I was actually doing something today, like using my brain. I then ended my day by taking Ollie for a walk up the canal. Yes, surprisingly, this is canal. It's just got a load of this green stuff in it. And we met Alex and his friend for a tie, which was super yummy. And the sky was absolutely gorgeous. Hi, everybody. Long time no speak. Um, basically, as you can tell... Oh, phone. As you can see from my background, I am not in London. I've come back to my parents' house because it's one of my sister's hen do's tomorrow. So I've come down, it's about half past three now, so I haven't vlogged anything. I've just had two, I came down here in time for my two online teaching. So I had one on amenorrhea 
and oligomenorrhea and then I just had one on bereavement in pregnancy which was a bit of a downer way to end um, on a Friday but really important nonetheless. So I think the plan for today, for the rest of the day, is get fish and chips because it's Friday and the fish and chip shop near here is so so good. It's called like Chez Fred. If you live down here or you're ever down here like Bournemouth direction, I think it's where is it? I think it might be in somewhere called Westbourne. I'm already missing Ollie. It's been like six hours and I've literally got Ollie withdrawals. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking because it's now been three minutes and I'm really not that exciting. But yeah, I'm gonna crack on with some work. So I started by making sure my portfolio was up to date for the week. So I was just doing my daily reflections. I take this really, really small notebook with me on the wards because I can just put it into my scrubs pocket. And it's just helpful to jot down things to remind my brain. I don't take lots of notes because you can literally find everything on Google, in textbooks, but just to jog my memory about what to look over. So on Saturday morning, I headed with my parents to a place called Flamingo for brunch. And yeah, my dad's shirt definitely uh, follows the mood. To get me in the vlog, what do you want to say? Um, I'm enjoying a very nice cappuccino. Um, I've just had my hair done. And now I'm going to get ready very soon. Um, I've got a new black dress. And I'm going to really enjoy going out um, to Are celebrate you? my daughter's hair with my other two daughters. So I had the veggie brunch, which was so, so good. Then we got ready and headed out to a drag queen show, which was so much fun. And they were absolutely amazing. And we had such a good time. Hey girls, they want to 